Hey, what's up, guys and girls? Hard drive 163. Down by the Rio Grande for now. I'm going to start off with this. There might be a part two of this video. It just starts and stops around 23 minutes. Okay? And I don't know how to do the rest of it. And I'm not going to download it and mend them all together and all that kind of shit. But is there going to be information that you want to hear in this video? Yes. I guarantee it. Yeah, so anyways, let me start over here. And we won't do this no more. This is how I do some of this. Watch close. Alright. I changed that tip. Alright. Yeah, I can't eat Chinese food like this, but I've been doing this shit a day or two. Okay? The reason for everything that I do. So... Keep that in mind. What you see down here, it could be big, it could be small. It just depends on the job, but nothing's really going to change. The procedure is the same. Just bigger or smaller tools. The only thing I'm not showing you is a Dremel. That's what I recommend to cut this. Never use wire cutters. They destroy the end. It won't be flat. And bear with me too because I'm looking through my camera. All right, to do this now I'm going to show you this one how to put one of these together and this could be even for a 350 amp or one hot I keep seeing people using that welding cable junk shit stop doing that, do it right you're losing current and ground I'll get into that a little bit more in depth if I don't forget here in, in, towards the end of this video now don't be using used junk. I, I found this one. I did clean this with the brass brush, the inside. It has to be clean. It's got to be clean. If it's got debris or anything, clean it. Throw it away or buy new. Don't be digging through your, your tool can, your junk can, to find something like this. I just got this one sitting here. I probably, I think I used this for another video, which I'm going to link with this video. All right, That's probably what this is for. I had to dig this one out to find it. No. I don't do this stuff anymore. You guys do it. The amp builders do it. That's their job. That's part of the amplifier. The wires, the fuses, the quick disconnects. If you guys, the amp builders, don't know how to do this, I'm going to show you. It's not hard. It'll look a little different because I'm going to use some smaller stuff because I don't have anything in here that I'm going to tear apart right now and redo it. Again, the procedures are exactly the same. You don't need a lot of fancy tools to do it either. This will work. My torch is buried over there somewhere, but considering I'm going to use this, an 8 gauge, I'm going to use this here. I got the air conditioner's got to be turned back on. Hold on. <clears throat> it's still hot and humid down here. But I'm pretty close to the. Well, if I shut this off, it won't be as noisy either. I hate shutting my baby off. Alright. I use something like this. You see, my, like my little tools that go up over there. This is all decades and decades of doing this. And a lot of other stuff on the bench. Each tool is modified one way or another. I don't know how that happened. It pisses me off. i probably let someone use them. But see how the jaws go together? And see how it's not flat at the tip it's just the tip like needle nose touch so there's not a large surface area that's going to touch when I put them together so for instance I already did it in there you see that little mark you can go like this you want this to where it's recessed look through the camera so it doesn't catch your wood on fire burn your plastic whatever you're working on lock it down there you go Okay, now also, if you're under 18 years old, please consult your parents before you proceed any further. If you've never done anything like this before, I highly recommend that you study even more before you try this. This is very dangerous. This can put you in the hospital. This can make you blind. This can really hurt you, all right? Very hot molten metal and it can flash if you get it too hot. You really have to try to do that. Or if you knock something over and splashes, 
and you try to rub it off, it'll be worse than rubbing tar on you. I guarantee you're not going to be happy. Uh-uh. So be careful. Maybe wear gloves. And I always wear glasses because I have to. And I would, anyways. And the people that I've taught how to do this, yes, safety glasses are in the shop when I have installers. You can guarantee it. Okay, so we know everything has to be clean. If, you, if it has to be cleaned, use flux. You guys are not a well that sweat pipes, no. Remember this. If it's sweated or sweat 99.9%, it means it's going to leak. It's going to leak. And if it wasn't clean and it's not leaking, it's eventually going to just break apart. Terrible solder joint or sweat joint, like sweating pipes. This is very similar to that. So if you have to use a wire brush to clean it, use flux to clean it, clean it. Usually when you buy everything brand new, it's already clean. And just don't touch it with your oily fingers. Don't do that. Your, your hands got to be clean. And touching solder, that's not good either. It's lead, tin, oil, alloys. You know. Flux without the fumes not going to hurt you. So anyways, I already trimmed this back. Kind of show you what that looks like. I gotta look out of the camera, hope you'll be in it. See how that looks? It looks a little short, right? But it's not. Because that's gonna go inside that bevel right there. And down. Alright? See? You want this to go all the way down to here. And there's a couple little tricks if you're like in a super bind. Don't I don't recommend doing this. But if you were in a bind, a major bind you had something like this, it was too big. That's why I say use a Dremel or something to cut these. So it's not, you know, 50 wires are like, you know, real long and then the other ones ain't as long. It's, it should be flat like that, pretty much. I got this turned a little bit so that it's all, they're all there. All the wires are flush. So if you have to do it, and I'll explain more in depth here in a few minutes, you would put that all the way down inside and then push once it's hot and molten to where this goes all the way down to that rounder part right there. See it? You push it all the way down inside like that. I'll go more in depth here in a minute. That's for an emergency. All of this up here doesn't matter. It's all about the tip. It's all about the tip of this. So let's get this out of the way. These are kind of funky trying to get these in here. Because you don't want this going into here. It'll burn the shit out of anything that touches it. And you don't want to mutilate these either. Otherwise they won't work correctly. You can't get them real tight. But you don't want to be forcing on this stuff anyway. You don't want to mash this so where your connectors have burrs and gouges in it. That way it won't be able to conduct or carry the rated current anymore. You'll have to get your little files out, straighten them all out, take the coating off, etc. Okay, so now grab this. I ain't used to soldering through no camera. Especially where I got it right now. My small uh, tripod took a dump on me. Now I'm using a big one. Looks like it's in there. You can see it. Hold on a second. Focused in there. Let's zoom in a little bit. I'm not sure how much I without my glasses or with my glasses. Uh, I'm gonna try to go around the tripod. You gotta have a clean tip. You don't want to touch it a lot. There's no stray wire sticking out. That'll cause you ten times the work. Okay. Clean tip. I cheat a little bit. See, now you just see I'm touching the wire.
see the wire doing it? It's done. Now, you, if I took the Dremel out and sliced that at the very tip, it would be all solder. It wouldn't be... You'll see copper, you know, as you cut through each copper 30 gauge strand, but it's, it's all electrically together. It's not a physical bond, it's an electrical bond. It's not a mess. All right, so now a little vice gripper. See how it's not going in? It's all right. It's all right. Just bear with me. I want you guys to stick with me, all right? It'll get better than this. <clears throat> In the video, that is. We'll get into some ohms and joules and resistance, too. Didn't want to waste this solder, because I'm waiting on more. Tell you what, this shit's gone out of this, out of the roof. The prices for solder. And Chinese people, you're all right, but your solder completely sucks. If you can still get some Radio Shack stuff, guys and girls, buy it, sixty forty. But don't buy no cheap shit. You'll be sorry. I guarantee it. So now we're gonna do. We don't need quite that much. Well, about that much. We're, I'm not going to wear gloves. I don't need gloves. I don't think, anyways. And I'll burn myself through the camera. I don't normally use this torch for this. Here. You can do it like really long. I'm going to do it like stretch it out. I'm going to do it like this. So we want to get it like about right there. See it? Put the heat towards the bottom, not the top. Make sure there's nothing in front of it that's going to catch on fire. Pay attention to what you're doing. Have everything ready, like I do. See? Let it heat up. Don't try to force it in yet. No, I don't know how long I've done it. But I'd say it's getting pretty warm. This is a little torch. But it'll do it. Okay. And then be ready with your shrink tube. You pull this away for a minute. Be ready with everything you got. If you need your shrink tube on there, make sure it's not going to get warm. It'll go in the wrong spot. Put the heat back to it. It's molten. Some of it might come out. Now, remember, it didn't go in before. It will now when it gets hot. Now it's all getting hot. Boom. See how it went in? Shut your torch off. Don't move. Sit still still as you can. If you have something like this nearby, go like that. Okay? It's hot enough and cured, or cold enough and cured that you can take it out. I might have a mess. I couldn't see what I was doing really. But no, there we go. Okay? You see how it went all the way down inside? First it stopped. That's because the solder that I put on this end already cooled down and became the solid. This was a liquid when I went to push it inside, but when I kept the torch there, not to try to burn it, but to keep the heat to it, the solder that was inside, that was molten, heated the solder up that was on this and it pushed in. I held it there for a second or two, 
removed the torch and I didn't move and I let it cure. Got the sponge, went around it and cooled it off. This is the exact same procedure that you would use on something like this on the 350 Anderson connectors. Whether it would be on these. Okay. These or even larger. All the same stuff. But you want to make sure the gauge of wire, let me cool this off so I don't get myself, is the same diameter of wire that fits inside. What I showed you before is not recommended because lead, tin, alloy, or solder is a really shitty conductor. It's, it really is. For instance, if you would just kind of just some half-assed way or if you did it any other way that I just showed you the whole procedure that's that's what you do okay for that that's awesome shit right there you really don't even need shrink tube I do I do my own I put shrink tube around it but if you use shit solder don't use shit solder okay not on your if you if you have something like this or bigger, you know, I've got shit up to 700, 700 amps, where you can use an Anderson, you know, both sides, or one side, you know, 4, 6, 8 gauge, 4, 6, 8 gauge, and I'll, I'm going to explain how to put those together on one side of all red, and then the other one, you know, two of them, black, you know, so you have four connectors, one 350, which is 700, and the other one, the, the two blacks, 700. You can pull a lot of current through Anderson connectors if you do it correctly. You know, years ago I used to answer a lot of questions, show a lot of pictures on how to do a lot of this stuff on all the popular Facebook groups. And just so many of them F-wads would argue and say that's not how you do it, whatever. I just stopped doing it, you know, literally. Or why you got six or eight wires on that amplifier? You know, then you go to explain why. And, well, that ain't done right then. Just a bunch of flipping idiots. Well, for instance, if you have an amplifier that does have like six, two, four, six, eight, eight gauge wires coming out the back, they did it correctly. They didn't do it incorrectly. They didn't try to be cheesy with one wire. It, I'm standing up for the guys now. They did it right because on the B positive, instead of running one junk giant wire to one end and feeding all them transistors all the way across, they spread it out so each bank of transistors can pull current evenly. All right, that's that's why they do that. Now, when it comes to the ground, you know how important it is for the positive. The ground is probably more important. Well, electrons travel from negative to positive anyway. There's a, well, people that are electricians and electronics, they already know that. But I want to get into a little bit about uh, chassis ground, earth ground, and various grounds, potentials, etc. right now. And how important this shit is. Okay? For instance, I'm just going to cover the amp part right now in your antenna. You know how picky I am on the coax. No, I'm not going to show that because... People aren't going to do it. If you've seen how long it took and all the steps it took, you'd say, screw that, and you're going to do it your way. And then I wasted my time. So it's really cheaper for you just to buy the stuff. And you know where. And you know it's 100% correct. A lot of little tricks involved in the coax. Right there. So anyways, now, if you use some cheese-ass junk, Taiwanese, nothing against Taiwanese people either. But our stuff here, a lot of stuff made in the United States, is good stuff. It's good merchandise. Good materials. Alright, so stick with it. Radio Shack makes decent solder. And if you want to spend the money, get Kessler. Take, make your, take your pick. Alright, so now, if you have a whole shitload of solder in there, and you didn't tin it the way I showed you, remember I'm going to put a link 
to another video. And I see I'm at 20 minutes. Let me get this done in 3 minutes if I can. I think it stops at 23. If you have any resistance here in this ground, it doesn't matter if you use an antenna analyzer, half wavelength tune coax to your antenna, which is exactly the same as tuning your antenna at the feed point. Actually, it's more accurate using a half wavelength tuned at frequency. If you have a bunch of shit ass solder or a shitty solder joint, or while you're soldering, you wiggled it, that's all it took. It's jump. You gotta start all over again. Then you would have resistance here. So, therefore, your radio would see one ground, your amp would see another, and your antenna would see another. The final stage of your amplification is your amplifier. So, even though you see 50 ohms at your antenna with your analyzer, your SWR meter, as you draw current, joules, through this solder connection on your ground, your main ground, as this impedance changes or, you know, the resistance changes, it's going to change what your, your amplifier sees at the antenna. These are what are called put RF and DC potentials. They must be equal. I see I've got a minute and a half left. I hope you're catching this. How important this shit is. If this ground, the main grounds to your amplifier, have any shitty connections or not done exactly or better, and I don't know of any better way of doing that, I think I covered it all, then your SWR is going to look fine when you key the mic if you have a meter in line. But as you begin to modulate and draw more current, that's changing the resistance to your ground. That ground is what is going to change now between your RF and DC potentials. So even though you see 50 ohms, if you got 60 ohms now, say 100 ohms difference in resistance when you're drawing 500 amps through this damn thing, that equation would be pretty trippy to explain to what you're now in antenna sees. It's the same ground. So will you create your own problems? Yes. Your amp builder might be building you the best amp in the world. Your radio man might be doing the best radio work, but if you get cheesy and chinsy on shit, your stuff ain't going to work. All right, I'm coming up on 23 minutes. Hope you all learned something, man. Pay attention. Okay? Have a good weekend. Hard drive, 163. Tiny Mud Duck Station on a Rio Grande. I'm clear. Click, click.